uh, we're very excited about this project because uh, in hindsight, when we sat down and started doing a bit of a write-up, we actually realized what we had achieved. I think at the time, we were just in the thick of the things of the project and uh, yeah, we were quite excited about it. So on our side, I've got Claudio, who's in our drawing office, who's, who can introduce himself. He wasn't unfortunately with us at the time of the project, but he is in our drawing office. So he has got the model open and he can share the model with you with on a screen share. Okay, um, so model, he'll, he'll introduce himself shortly. And then we've got Graham Bryce, who's in Zimbabwe, who can also introduce himself. Um, he's in Bulaway at the moment. Um, he's the direct, uh, director at uh, Hogos. So I'm the director at Viva Engineering. Um, we've been in partnership with Hogos for about uh, eight, nine years. And they are our strategic partners in Zimbabwe. We're their partners in South Africa. And we support each other. And we've executed a number of really super projects in Zimbabwe that we probably haven't bragged about enough over the years. So well, that, that's where we come you. in, you know, that's where the Steel Institute and the Steel Awards come in, you know, we've got to have these projects out there. Absolutely, we're realizing that a bit late in the day, but we are realizing that. Good stuff. Paddy, do you want to maybe introduce yourself? I know you weren't part of the project, but you're going to sort of drive the, uh, drive the model for us. Yeah. Hi, guys. Um, so I'm Claudio Tricotto. I'm the drawing office manager at Beaver at the moment. Like uh, Colin said, I wasn't directly involved with this project, so I'll try my best to, to share what I can with you um, with Colin's assistance. Okay. I'm Eric, don't worry. Graham, do you want to introduce yourself that side? Yeah, sorry. I uh, yeah, just had a little bit of a problem, but can you hear me all? Yes, can you hear you? Yeah, hi. Uh, Graham Bryce here. I'm the general manager of Hogos Engineering in Bulawayo, Zimbabwe. Uh, this company, Hogos, has been going for about 135 years now, so we're wow. quite an experienced on the ground thing. I haven't been GM for that long at the time, of course. <laughs> it it uh, just looks that way. Yeah, it just looks oh, that way. Oh, shots that's fired, fine. Colin. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. I'll sort him out in due course. <laughs> Yeah, so, okay. um, the, the project, uh, as, as Colin said, we, we're strategic partners together here, and the project was done for Zimplats, the, one of the, big, the biggest the platinum mines uh, in, in Zimbabwe, um, through ourselves as the main contractor. Um, and all the fabrication, as he said, being done in, in uh, fabrication and delivery being done from South Africa, from Viva. Uh, and we um, put we erected the, the, the structure, the, the dome, up uh, at, at, uh, at Zimplatz and Gezi Mine. Uh, this is, that is the second dome we put up there. We put up the first one way back in uh, 2001 when the mine, was just, the mine was just starting itself type thing. So, but this one is a much bigger dome and it had its challenges, but it was a super project to have. We were very pleased to have won it and we're very pleased to be sharing this with you and uh, hope that we can go forward as the winner. Right, who else do we have on the on the call with us? There's a, someone who we can't see. It's that who else Probably is me. Is, is it you on in two two different places? What is that A F R Z E R? Okay, I'm not sure who that is. I'm just trying to get back to the video. Oh, okay. Well, we can we, we can see you, okay? Yeah, we, you can. Yeah, we can. Yeah, yeah you we can. can see see you. You. I can't see anything but something to do with telling me all to buy Zoom and what Zoom does. I've, I've obviously pressed the wrong button here. But I'll get <laughs> that's, that's fine. I can hear you. Not a problem. The project is I so interesting that we have a spy here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, Colin, do you maybe just want to give us a brief description of what the structure actually is and what it entailed? Absolutely. So as Graham says, we were uh, contracted by Zimplatz um, at Ngezi to build a dome, which covered a stock, it's essentially a stockpile cover for the run of mine stockpile. What they were finding was that the mine was getting a lot of, uh, was getting rained on and that they were getting a lot of rat holding in the stockpile. So the stockpile wasn't performing as it was intended to from the original designs. So we effectively covered that stockpile. That stockpile, um, just to give you some really high key points, is uh, 380 tons worth of steel, which Gary um, will share. All right, so I'll just give you some very high level, and then uh, I'll just talk you through the, the sort of high level on the project, and then we can go from, maybe to Andre then. So as I started saying, the, the structure, it's uh, 380 tons worth of structural steel. 
absolutely massive. The radius of the structure is uh, 52 meters, or diameter sort of 100 meters. So that's the size of a rugby field um, in diameter. The coverage of the, of the dome was just, just short of 8,000 squares. Um, so if you compare that to the Northgate Dome, the Northgate Dome was just over that at uh, 11,000 squares. So this is almost the same size as the Northgate Dome, just to give you some kind of perspective on the structure. Um, the top height uh, is around just over 36 and a half meters. So you'll see from some of the construction photos, which Graham will talk through to you, um, just obviously from a height perspective, so quite complex. So the structure um, consists of 12 main boxed gantries, um, which were fabricated and then assembled on site before erecting. Um, each of those box gantries are about 2.5 meters deep, two meters wide and 54 meters long once assembled. Um, at the top is a seven meter diameter ring, um, compression ring, which basically takes all of the members and all of the members had to tie into that. So it was part of the complexity of the project, which I'm sure Andre will explain now. But I think, yeah, just from an overall project perspective, I think that explains sort of roughly what the project was about. Um, sorry, just before I leave, um, what you can also see on the model there was that there was an existing conveyor that was already in place, which you can see from that um, sort of light blue and the yellow uh, markings. So the one is the leg, the cantilever leg, and then the top platform of an existing conveyor that was in place. That was part of the complexities to actually erect this around an operating conveyor that operated at night. Um, Mine had to still continue operating, so we weren't, didn't have the, the luxury of a greenfields project. We a lot of the design considerations and the construction considerations actually had to do with exactly that was working around our client who had to keep the mine um, operational. So I think Andre, now that, now that we know that it's you on the call, do you want to maybe talk about the structural design portion of the, of the project, Andre, before we go on to the actual fabrication and and that. Hi, Colin. Um, Colin, yeah, as you mentioned, um, the main reason for this design was due to a production of the mine. They could not afford, you know, to shut down during the construction of, of this dome. So we ca well, I came up with the, the method of erecting this dome without a center support. I don't think, oh, I'm not aware of it being done before. Um, that's where the ring comes in. So what we did is or what i did is i designed the trusses that's why you see it's box trusses um as box trusses are not single trusses like you usually get on these type of structures due to this you know the complexity of erecting this so as as ohots knows the method statement of erecting this was lifting the ring the upper ring into the air with the crane and, and then having another crane connecting the first truss to the the base and then connecting to the ring and having a third crane on the other side connecting the truss to the base and then to the ring and then shifting one of the cranes to a third position connecting to the the ring and then connecting to the base so we formed a tripod basically in essence and once the tripod was for you know um, created the structure was freestanding and then I just worked out the procedure, what trust to put in when. Um, it was a little bit of a zigzag, you know, function because of the compression. But um, we managed to do that, or Hochart's managed to erect the structure, not even with the finger inju inju injury, as far as I know. So, you know, really well done to them. And um, that's basically the, in a nutshell, you know, or why you see this type of design that you're seeing on the screen. Good. Emmanuel, any questions or comments from your side so far? Uh, yes, thanks for describing that erection. That's actually what I was also curious about. Um, and then I assume uh, some sort of sheeting was put on or, uh, and, and how complicated was that? <clears throat> yeah, if I could perhaps come in on that one there. Yeah, there, there was about five and a half thousand square meters of IBR sheeting that went on to the, the chromodex sheeting. Um, basically, as, as Andre has described it here, the, 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 as soon as we had one bay, or one or two bays ready, we then brought in the sheeting team. So the sheeting teams were working in, in conjunction with us as we were going along. Because uh, as, as Andre had said, when once the, the 12 uh, 
girders were in and holding it up, we, we, we still continued to hold it in the middle with our, our big 90 ton crane until we were satisfied and, and until we could get some more of the, the, um, the intermediate members in and, and uh, what have you. So once we had done that, we could then bring in the, the, the sheeting team and uh, they got started. So it was like we were working together with them. Or they were working together at the same time as us uh, so that we, we, could, we weren't waiting until we had sort of finished it to, uh, uh, to, uh, uh, for them to start. Obviously, if you look at and it's, it's segmented into 12 different segments, virtually 12, 12 triangles, if you want to put it that way, so that all the sheets at the end were all have, had to be cut uh, to, to, the, to the shape and whatever. And then in between the sections, we had uh, a, a, a flashing covering it. So they had to go in at, at the same time. Uh, it, it, so there was a lot, a lot of cutting of the sheets that had to be done with it. So yeah, and it worked out pretty well. Um, at, at the end of the day, we were really happy with it. And the looks of it, you, you'll see a picture just now, I'm sure. Uh, of it being complete sheeting. And, and one more question. So I assume the tension ring is in the foundation. <clears throat> Sorry, um, I'm correct. Yes, um, Emmanuel, all the, you know, um, the top ring that you see in for the structural steel, that's also in compression, but then your basis, you know, prohibits it's from, you know, kicking out. So it was massive by basis. Um, we subcontracted that out to RMCE, who did the civil design. I was only responsible for the structural steel design on this project. But yeah, I've got photos somewhere, you know, um, of the, the size of the civil foundations and then the type of loads we're talking about. Good. Colin, how would you say that this project demonstrates the benefit of steel as a material? I think, um, just coming back to on our side of the once it was uh, laid out by Andre and his team and, and then we did the structural detailing in Tekla. I think what we there was a lot of automation on our side. We did the fabrication on um, and, and a five step angle matic because the majority of the members were angle angles. And with that there was really a the project like like Andre said, we really went through with not one single problem. We assembled a, a large portion um, at our, our galvanizers before uh, galvanizing just to verify one or two of the construction sequences but I think what the what we found was that there was not one single problem on site thing went through together with hardly any issues at all um, so we managed to obviously make up a lot of time on the fabrication side the automation and the uh, in, in the automation process which then helped our partners in Zimbabwe to have enough time for the erection Good. Yeah. Good. One more question regarding the erection. Uh, how did, uh, uh, did you survey and put in holding down bolts or somehow that just worked out? Yeah, if you look at, if you could just bring us to that picture that the base we had there, Colin. Yeah, Emmanuel, if I can just jump in, sorry, Graham, is we, we had that thick base plate that was actually bolted to the, the civils and then we had that clevis that was welded to the, you know, on site to, to make sure. So what, what was done, they surveyed it, um, you know, they bolted the main bottom one to the, to the civils and then the survey came out and actually marked out that positions of the clevis plate right to you know, the nearest millimeter. And then they only installed that and t um, welded that up. So that's how we got the accuracy correct. And as you can see, the connections is also a clever type one bolt connection. So to make erection easier, so it swivels around that point. And, and that pipe you see it, there, that's just a jig that, that was used during construction to get the lengths between the clevises correct. Yeah, yeah, I can see. Uh, so, the, and the sheeting was being put on while you're erecting. So when you actually released that 90 ton crane, did it drop? Nothing. I was on site during the erection. Um, I could not observe it for, uh, with the naked eye. I could not even see that thing drop. Um, I know in theory it, it, it dropped, but I could not see it. Meaning it didn't distort the sheeting? <clears throat> no, the sheeting was actually only put on after the 12 girders ah. was in place. 
So the sheeting wasn't um, put on before the 12 girders and the main brace base was in place, and then only the sheeting started. Okay. Yeah, that was after we put in more of the steelwork, yeah, but the, the, we, we released it there, and, and certainly, as Andre said, you could not see any, um, any movement at all. It didn't, didn't seem to drop at all. It was, it was pretty static. And what has to be remembered during the entire erection process, and as Colin has mentioned, there is a, a stockpile conveyor that was existing in, in position, and that continued to work throughout the time that we were, we were carrying out the erection sequence type of thing. So they were, during the night, it was pounding away there and, and dropping in. The, the conveyor speed had been reduced to about 70% of its normal uh, operating speed uh, so that there wasn't stuff uh, spewing everywhere. Uh, and it worked out pretty well. So we, but it, but it was a working a working stockpile during throughout the process of of the erection. That, uh, that's incredible. Uh, if if um, Colin, if you guys can give me a chance to sh um, share the screen, I can share the screen when the tripod was actually installed. Um, here we go. Let me know if you can see it. Yes, you can see your screen. Um, that's the tripod. That's when we put in the third leg and you can still see the 90 tonner there, you know, holding it. But that 90 tonner was released, be, you know, and like we said, we could not observe any um, sag or deflection of that ring with the naked eye. And then from that point onwards, what you're seeing on the screen, um, they continued with, with the rest of the erection. I was actually going to look, I can show you, there we go. I've got a couple of nice, there's, there you can see the other trusses being installed without the, you know, bracing between, but that's basically all 11 trusses and we've had a 12 one sitting here with a cross truss. I think I've got a photo of it. There's just another photo taken further. Emmanuel, there you can see the existing conveyor coming in. And like, like Graham said, they were running production at night. So you can actually see the material lying there. Mm. It was only during day, during construction, when they stopped the conveyor. And, and, and you didn't have any issues with twisting during erection? Um, not, we, we had damaged on one of the, 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 the girders, but not, not major. Um, luckily, luckily, like I said, with the design, it's braced in all directions, so effective length is, is not that, you know, long. Yeah. And that was also the reason for this type of design, just to make erection easier so you yeah. can lift it with a crane. You're not sitting with a single, you know, truss system that, you know, wobbles around when you lift it or try and install it. So. That's a big, big erection. It is. A, it's a massive, massive erection. I can also show you the... While we've got this open here, sorry, let me just close. That's actually the completed structure when I went for the final sign off, as you can see with the sheeting on. And this is one of the main brace bays. We had three of them that yeah, takes all your wind force. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So there's three, three of these uh, brace bays. And then if I can just close that one, that's just from further away that you can see the end product. Yeah. It's... Could, could I ask, ask you just, you... sorry, Colin, sure. um, just some of those extra photos that have been shared here. Um, if I could ask you to just pop them through in a mail to me so that I can add those to the submission. Um, and then okay, also we'll what, what we've been asking our, our nominators and project team to do is if you've got um, like a short video of the model that you can export, like just a little bit of a walkthrough of the, of the model, that's also a great thing for us to, to add to the project profile if, if you're able to send that through, um, Colin. Okay, I'll, it's all right. We organized the model of the video. Andre, I'll, I'll send you an email straight after this. Just uh, if you could send me those, um, those pictures, that'll be great. Then I'll forward them on to Denise. Thanks, Andre. Okay, 100%. I've got a whole file, Colin, so I'll zip it up and send it to you. Okay. I don't come Colin, what are you most proud of on this project? What do you think went really, really well? I think something that we've sort of overlooked at this point that I'd really like to just is um, there was a lot of early involvement from Andre's side and his team with uh, Graham and ourselves, which I think really makes a massive difference. Um, we were called in very early on into the project to discuss uh, constructability 
how it was going to be constructed, discuss the safety of the people on site that were going to be um, erecting it, make sure that they got safe access. Um, so it wasn't that we had an engineer that was working in one silo, we were trying to do our thing and then suddenly on site, someone had to try to do something else. So for me personally, that was one of the biggest differences on this project to other projects. You know, we've all done nice projects in our time, but this project really for me was a, a, a real collaboration of everybody early on so that everyone could give their input. And there were a number of points on, on, on base design that he really looked at once we considered different ways of constructing it. To ultimately get to a point like Andre mentioned that the project was erected without a single um, hour lost on the project, which was really fantastic. Just also, Colin, in terms of this being a, a project beyond South African borders, were, were there any uh, complexities or logistical issues that you needed to solve? Yeah, absolutely. So we've got a, um, a spot of, at, as, at Viva, 85% of our work is exported into Africa. So we have a very strong logistics uh, team that, that, that pack our trucks and dispatch to cross-border. Um, with Hogarth over the years, we've got a really efficient logistics um, arm which gets the stuff up to site very quickly. I think on average, we, we had about, if I'm not mistaken, we had 31 trucks on this project that ran through Bright Bridge and they were all cleared within sort of nine days on average. So we really had a super team. And, but yes, it is definitely a leg that gets forgotten about and is definitely important leg when, you all, when, when we are all under time pressure on a project. Absolutely. Good. Um, any other project team members like to just elaborate on what you feel went really well on this project or, or what you're proud of? Um. Yes, I, I, yeah, I'd like to say, um, during the course of the erection, erection of the, the 12 main uh, girders, um, through the presence of each one of those, the entire mine management insisted on being present, watching us, uh, every step of the way to, to uh, they were in awe of what was happening, how it was being done. We, obviously, all the crane studies and the method statements have been done type of thing, but um, sometimes people don't don't go with their, their, their heads and what have you uh, and want to make sure that everything was done, being done properly. So we were, we were lifting the, the, the main structure, the main components of the thing under close scrutiny from the mine and uh, the mine management that type of thing as colin said it all went very smoothly uh and there was not one single safety problem that we had in the entire project and there is 370 tons of steel in there 5500 uh, square meters of of, of uh, sheeting and we were immensely proud of it immensely proud of it and our the rating that we got from from the mine in terms of our ISO uh, certification was very pleasing as well. It's got a very good rider from the mine itself, and they were very happy. So we are extremely proud of it. Excellent. Um, if I did uh, my numbers correctly, Andre, that's less than 50 kilograms a square meter. So significantly less. Yeah, about. I can work it out on manual, but no, yeah, it's, it's more good. or less. Mm. Um, Emmanuel, any, any closing comments or questions? Or, and then Colin, I'll hand over to you if you've got anything you'd like to wrap up. No, I'd just like to say that uh, uh, right from when we first saw it, I've been quite impressed. Uh, I was very curious regarding the erections. That's what I assumed would be the most complicated part of this project. And um, I think we have very good information on how, on how it was erected. And it's, I mean, it's a very exciting project. And uh, I hope you guys were able to charge for not shutting down the mine. We wish we were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then, Colin, just in wrapping up, um, is there anything else that you'd like to, to mention or any, anything else you'd like to share um, screen wise? I think yeah, we'll we'll send you guys the photographs. So I think Andre's got some nicer photographs than what we've shared so far. So we can do that. I think just in closing from my side, I think this really is the epitome of uh, teamwork in my mind. Um, not one contractor taking um, the kudos for it. Everyone working together to assist the next person in what he had to do on the project. And this is really, I can say, from my side, uh, a, a, a real team effort in in executing this project successfully. 
and it shows what can be done um, in Southern Africa. Fantastic. Okay, gents, um, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for sharing your project with us. Uh, do keep an eye on your inboxes. There is information going out about the Steel Rewards online platform. Um, it is live currently. All of the projects are listed on there. Um, you will be live streaming the actual awards event um, on the 15th of October through that, that online platform or app. Um, you don't need to log in to be able to view the live stream, but if you do want to rate your project or interact with other um, virtual attendees, then you do need to sign in. All of the project team members, as per your project team list that was submitted in that Excel document, have been preloaded as virtual attendees. So the first thing that you'd need to do is just go to that eventmobi.com forward slash steel. I'll, I'll you check your inbox or I'll email you again as well just to remind you. Um, you go to the website, um, you go to the login area, just enter in your email address. And then the first time you do that, it'll prompt you to set a password. Once you've set that, you can log in, uh, you'll be able to rate projects, um, you'll be able to message other attendees within the app, and you'll also be able to comment on the live stream. So just, just keep an eye on that. If you've got any questions on how the, the online platform works, just, just give me a shout. Um, what you'll see as well is with your project listing, all of your project team members that we've got the, the email address for have been loaded at the top of that project. So if someone goes into your project, um, and they want to connect with you, they can click on your, your profile within that project listing. It's just, you know, Steel Wars has always been a, a very good mechanism for networking and lead generation. So not being able to have that sit down dinner, we wanted to, to give our project team members an opportunity to still, um, you know, get mileage from, from the online event. So it's a different way of doing things, but we, we're all embracing a digital, um, technology this this year it's been the the year of covid inspired digital growth uh so yeah that's um that's my my five cents and yeah enjoy enjoy your weekend and thank you for showing us your project all the best oh, thank you super thank yeah. you for inviting us thanks denise thanks uh, Manuel. Yeah. okay keep thank on you very much. Okay. thanks everybody have a nice weekend you too thank you bye-bye